call this regular meeting of the Upshur County Board of Education to order. And our first order of business this evening is to stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dr. Allman, would you read our mission statement, please? Be happy to. The mission of the Upshur County Schools is to provide academic preparation, social responsibility, employability, and a desire of lifelong learning. Thank you. Just the clerk note that uh, we are two members short this evening. I know that uh, Mr. Souter had a doctor's appointment. I'm not sure he's going to make it. I'm not sure what happened to Mr. Johns. But we're, we have enough to continue to have a meeting. We have a quorum. The main thing. <coughs> You've had a chance to review the agenda. Do we have any uh, amendments or adjustments to the agenda? No. So, motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Thank you, Dr. Allman. Second. Second, Mrs. Bellamy. Thank you very much. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Page, same sign. Motion carries. Had a chance to review the minutes. Any additions or corrections to the March 13th regular meeting or March 16th special meeting minutes? Hearing that, I entertain a motion to approve. Motion we approve. Thank you, Mrs. Bellamy. Second. Second. Thank you, Dr. Owen. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. And we'll move right into the good part of the business here, acknowledging Upshur County's finest. We'd like to do that the best. We certainly do. And go right ahead, Mr. Lambert. Yeah, this is, this, is, uh, this is the great part. This is the fun part, the good part, the exciting part. And this is what it's all about. So it's a time that we recognize our students in Upshur County. And tonight's activity will be uh, involving the 43 new members of the uh, Upshur County chapter of the National Honor Society. These students that we're about to uh, recognize tonight uh, have been inducted into the National Honor Society at Buckhannon Upshur High School. And they have shown and exhibited attributes in scholarship. They had to maintain a 3.5 GPA, leadership, character, and service. So uh, it is our belief that with those kinds of attributes, the future is in really good hands. Like I said, we've uh, inducted 43 new members. And this is something new we're starting this year. We, we understand how important this is. So. Uh, from now on, you are going to be the inaugural class that's going to be recognized in front of the Board of Education also as the inductee. So starting tonight, a new tradition has, has started. So we're so glad that you're here, and I'm going to ask the Board to join me up front. Mr. Dilley is going to announce our inductees and we'll present them with a the certificate. And when, after you receive your certificate, if you would stand over there, uh, Ms. Clutter is going to take a picture. And by the way, how did we do in the softball game? We won ten. Score? Four to one. Who'd we beat? Bridgeport. I'm sorry, who'd we beat? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's really important, too. <laughs> There's a certificate for that. Yes, sir. Good job, ladies. Yeah. As I say these names, if I would mispronounce, I do apologize up front. Uh, Erica Alfred. Aaron Anderson. Good job, Aaron. Aaron Beer. Lindsay Beats. Matthew Bellamy, Alexa Benner, <laughs> Megan Buckmer, Beth Kent, Courtney Chilster, Alden Colding. Condi? Adele Condi. Condi. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Lauren Shabaka. Lauren Shabeko. 
everybody studying or they're at a track meet. <laughs> so we certainly understand that. Mercedes Dow. And there's baseball games. There's okay. That's okay. All right. Alexander Ellis. Taylor Everett. Sarah Gillespie. Emily Godwin. Ashley Hopkins. Deanna Hissel. Owen Howe, Jacqueline Kirchberg, Summer Kaiser, Larissa Langer, Carly Martin. Nathan Matthews, Caroline Anners, Aaron Nezzle. Right. Sorry. Aaron Nezzle. Catherine O'Hearn. Congratulations. Kelly Page. Brianne Polk, no, Daniel Perry, Allie Rickman, Marlene Ridgeway, Kirk Russell. Stephanie Ryan, Karen Seach, Drea St. Clair, Megan Stell, Casey Thorpe, Brooklyn Lowe, Good job. <laughs> Leah Wall. Well, that concludes our uh, the list, anyway, of, of those folks. We're very, very proud of, of each and every one of you. And I know that not everybody's here, but please understand that what makes these kids so well-rounded in what they do is they participate in a lot of activities. And there's never a perfect night to have everybody here. So we certainly appreciate your efforts. 
and uh, moms, dads, aunts, and uncles, as we say, they couldn't do it without you. So I hope that they take a moment to thank you for all your efforts, too. So, again, congratulations, kids. Any comments from board members? Well, that's, that's our cream of the crop right there. You know, these folks have all worked so hard. I know everybody that I went to school with that was in the National Honor Society succeeded. And so you guys are on your way. <coughs> Keep at it. Sure. They're going to take them outside for, for a picture outside also. Thank you all for coming out. We'll bring back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any, I don't want any. They're, they're done. Yet. I'll send that one down. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you all for coming. We're going to move on to the agenda now, and, and we have some unfinished business. Continue to have uh, discussions about the Buchanan Upshur Middle School facility, as well as uh, I think perhaps some CEFP project updates. And uh, so I'll turn that over to you, Joanne. Yes, we've um, been working on the surveys. The survey for the faculty and, and administration and staff at Buchanan Upshur High School went out earlier, uh, late last week, I guess, or earlier this week. Thursday, last week. Uh, and that, that was done via the uh, com computer and, and survey monkey so they're required to have those turned in by the Thursday I believe tomorrow okay and we'll have the results of that but it went out uh, everybody through their list served and um, we hope to get some really good results from that and then I have a copy of a draft of the public survey the brochure that we that we talked about I'd like to pass this down to you and have, have you take a look at it And if you would just take a moment and, and go ahead and fold it, or, or at least it's going to be in thirds the way it, when it when it comes back to us. And I can't even fold my letters like that. And if you just take a moment to read the first page, there it, it tells us what we're doing and why we want their in why we want the community's input. I think that capsulized encapsulates what we've talked about. Uh, not only will the public have the opportunity to drop these off at any school facility, they can mail them back to us, and, or they'll be able to access the survey online through our, through our uh, web page. take a look at the inside flap on your left hand side uh, you'll see that we're asking for some demographic information that we talked about um, and then we have some yes no questions and some optional boxes there we have a late arrival great what is your name honey Brianna Polk hi Brianna congratulations <laughs> come on in honey <laughs> so sorry to interrupt it's quite all right. It's okay. Glad you're here. No, no, that's fine. Don't be, don't, you know, it's okay. Glad you're here. Glad you're here. Absolutely. We're going to come right around here. Yeah. She rushed to get here. Yeah, I changed Just in the like car. Didn't ready. She changed in the car. I just got the track meet. Yeah. yeah, how'd you do in the track meet? Um, we did okay. I did a four by eight, and I don't know what we placed. And then I took eighth in the 800, and then second in the four. Congratulations. Thank you. That's, that's two congratulations. And this on behalf of the Board of Education, <laughs> congratulations on the National Honor Society. We're very proud of you. Thank you. you, guys say if you will. Yep, say hi there. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for coming right. out. Oh, no, I want your picture alone. That's the kind of effort that makes National Honor Society. That's right. That's right. That's great. That's exactly. Extra effort. Right. Thank you for coming. Sorry to interrupt, but That's I fine. could not let this go by. That's perfect. That's fine. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>
Thanks, Brianna. Good job. Thank you. Congratulations. So basically, um, if we don't have any objections to what we see here, you're going to send this out next week? or uh, Well, I want to talk about that after you look at the content. I want to tell you some things that we found out about uh, the process for, okay. for getting them sent out. Um, so we have question one, I guess, or uh, area one. We're asking for the age, ages of the people. And then we're, going, we're asking what occupation you all wanted to include private sector, do you, do you employ people, mm -hmm. kind of information. Do you have children in Upshur County Schools? Did you attend? Are you employed by Upshur County Schools? And so forth. Well, this yeah. one good. Mm -hmm. That's what we talked about. We did leave a place on the inside flap all the way to the right for additional comments and anything they, that the community would like us to know. And if you turn that flap again to the back side in, right here, we put some information there on the metal school. That's pretty important uh, demographic information that's there. So as we, as we move forward with processing of this, we, we want a little direction and, and uh, we need to make some decisions. We contacted the value guide. Uh, the value guide actually uh, has a distribution of 11,400 through their mails and through their deliveries and, and whatnot. Uh, the cost to put this flyer in is $55 per thousand. And we would have to have it, um, we'd have to call them in, in advance to reserve the time, and they need to have it um, 10 days in advance of the distribution date. And remember, the value guide typically goes out on a Thursday or a Friday, depending on your. Uh, so we we, want, we would if we wanted it next, we send it out tomorrow. Would be 10 days mm -hmm. hence before they would get it in there. Um, so we can still do that. That might uh, change when we need to make this decision. Are looking at the form date of, we were discussing April 11th as our form date, uh, but we could move that back a little bit to make sure these get out and have enough chance, time to get them back in and for us to analyze that data and put it out. Because remember, we're not only going to uh, put them out as hard copies, we want to do them online. So we just need to talk about that date for the form. Uh, we also, and, and when I say we, Adrian did all this, so I want to thank her for that. She worked hard on this, getting this information. The post office does have a, a that we talked about a bulk mailing. It's actually not a bulk mailing where they, uh, it's an account where you print the postage on it, and the ones that are sent back were charged for. Uh, there's an initial fee of a, annual fee to get that permit of $185, and then of course you're charged for the the return. So that fee um, is annual, and we could do it more often if we had the need to do that. Mm -hmm. it, it is an application process, and it typically takes one to two weeks to get that application approved. I did have an email later this evening that said they could take Zone 6 off of the value guide distribution, it would bring it down to 10,900. Yeah. And zone six is, is actually Webster County. It's okay. Holly River and Hacker Valley, that area okay. in the, well, the northern end of Webster. We do. Some. Mr. Johns, we're talking about the uh, <coughs> public survey that we mm -hmm. renovated here. You have any questions yeah, about it? Why? Uh, and the way the account works is we would place money in our account, and then when the when the um, surveys are returned, then they would take the money out of our our account mm -hmm. there. And then I guess at the end of the year we settle up, or when the time is. Well, how long do you think it'll take us to analyze the information? Well, depending on how many we get back, and uh, we want to take even the handwritten data and enter it into the computer data, so the computer can spit it all out, the information out, in addition to the uh, putting it out on the, on the website. 
And that's a decision we haven't made yet is how long do you want the survey to be out there? Do we want an end date on the survey? Or do you want to take them whenever they come just so we have the additional information? But at a certain date, use the data at hand. There should be a time period to get one back, I, I would think. Yeah, I thought we talked about that, but maybe not. But, uh, well, we, we talked about it, but never arrived at anything. Yeah. I think we. Yeah. But you know, if we want to get going on it, uh, the earliest we could get it in would be on the 12th at this point. Correct. So, uh, so if, if you need a week to analyze. I mean, I don't see how we could have a forum until May. Yeah, I think the dis decision becomes, do you want to <coughs> have the information prior to the forum, or does that matter, or do you want... We do have a question on here that says, would you, if we had a forum, would you, would you come? Mm -hmm. Well, that may just be a, a way for us to see if people were telling that's, the truth or not. <laughs> well, that, that's right. If we go ahead and have it, um, <coughs> I don't really know why the form. Just personally, don't know why the form necessarily hinges on. Yeah, I don't this. know why. I mean, I can't see any immediate reason why we need this information to have the form or before we have the form. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think this is in addition to what we get at the form, or the forms in addition to what we get here. Um, in fact, people could bring, I mean, it wouldn't necessarily be counted that night, but they could come to a forum, leave this off. At the well, we door. won't have them out by then. Oh, we may not have it. Oh, the 11th. We could right, the forum's the 11th. Well, so. that was going to be my next point, is we, if we went ahead with the forum, let's say on the 11th of April, uh, we could actually have these at the forum mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and distribute them that way in conjunction right. with putting them out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then what we would do is take that question off here that says, yeah. Would you attend a public forum with tours of Buckhannon and Upshur Middle School of Austin? Unless you're going to offer another one. Mm -hmm. And certainly, I mean, in the, since we're trying to really get out the word, it seems like we, we might want to do it again, too. I mean, um, later on. I mean. Keith, comments? George? Well, that, that's what I was, what Dr. Allman just said, was what I was going to suggest that you have more than one forum. The one forum we we could take the, the tour that we want to do, put on the website, and have one later on if we get got okay. more information out. And I don't know that we necessarily need to hand these out. I mean, if we're going to distribute them and they can do them online, um, you know, some people may want to do it two or three times, <laughs> which doesn't give you. That's, picture. That's, that's, that's we don't know that anyway. No, we don't need yeah. it really. But we, if we hand them, if we don't hand them out. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's a perception survey. It's not a. It, we, right. We, right. And we know that we may get some duplicates. Yeah. Yeah. But I think with the forum, maybe if we hand these out, we may folks may tend to focus on this instead of what's actually being said at the forum. So we'll, I think what I'm hearing you say is let's go ahead with this. Mm -hmm. We'll do it as quickly as we can get it out. We'll continue with our plans for the forum, yeah. and they'll just both be running simultaneously. Right. And then we'll decide on a date when to, to have these back. I don't think you'd want it out more than 10 days once it's distributed, would you? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't see any reason if people, they'll lose it. I know yeah. I would. Sure. Put it on the long. refrigerator if you have that long. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 So we'll, we'll put a we'll put a date on here. We want to receive it back. We'll try and get it in the, the April twelfth. That's the earliest. That would be the earliest. That we can get it in. Yeah. Okay. So we'll try and have them back then before the end of April, and we'll be able to disseminate the information in May and uh, talk about it before the end of the school. Okay. What's the, uh, just so we'll understand if we've reached our public, uh, do we expect 10% response or what do we expect? Uh, and, you know, if it's ever been done before in other ways. Because, uh, I mean, I've heard, I've heard, for example, ministers say that they have to make the same announcement 
a number of weeks before they realize that the congregation knows what the message is. Well, I've always always heard if you can get a 50% return rate on a survey, you're doing excellent. You're doing real good. Uh, our experience in our schools when we do surveys within the schools, the elementary uh, come back at 90%, and the middle school is lower than that, and the high school is yet lower mm. than that. Okay. So uh, who knows? Right. Well, I think it'd be nice to get 25%. I mean, if you can sure. get a, if you can get 25%, sure. I think that gives you enough to really mm -hmm. make. Yeah. Good idea, yeah. yeah, pretty good idea. I, I don't think you can even hope for much more than that. But um, okay, anything else on that? No. Anything? Uh, do we have any update on the MIP project? Um, you're meeting with the electrician. When's he coming again? That's the only update we have. And then we'll be talking with Ted to get him. He'll be here conducting the tour for uh, on the 11th. Mm -hmm. Ted's going to be conducting that. He's going to he's going to go with us. We'll come around and he'll actually narrate some of those those items in which we uh, think need to be addressed. And what about uh, the idea that we talked tossed around about inviting a HVAC professional? Um, that's who he's talking with, Harper. Harper, the gentleman from Harper. Oh, okay. Okay. Are they doing the? Are they with the NRA MIP project too? Mm -hmm. They involved in that. Okay. okay. All right. And then this other list, I, I want, if I may, just move on on to other maintenance types of pro, uh, projects that we're looking at. This is a very, very tentative. We're early this year, uh, summer. Um, mm -hmm list of things that we're that we're looking at we're getting cost analysis and we're getting bids for some of the contractor things but we wanted to give you a copy of what we're looking at summer projects and uh, probably in late april we'll have the finalized list out here but these are just the projects that we think we can start looking at for the summertime and what uh, keith has done and uh, what we've done is we've We've taken the preferences of the principals. We've taken the list that we looked at the other day, CEFP list, to see what we can add here for the summertime. And then we've looked at last year's summer list of some things that perhaps didn't get finished. And this is a compilation of, of that. They are in no particular order. They're not in any priority order. That would be the next step. But. So when you say, um, I mean, I, we don't have to discuss it tonight, but I'm just question. When you say these are possible summer projects, is it possible we would do them all? <laughs> I would love to do them all, but I know that we won't have the time to do Okay, so it's really just a, a group of projects we need to get done, and, and, and but they're, none of them are prioritized no, whatsoever. Yeah. No. So, uh, and I won't do that until I get all the information back in, bed sheets and that type of stuff, so at least I know what costs are. Mm -hmm. We can figure out timelines. Okay. Is uh, the the ADA the high school? Is that something Ted's working on? It's getting he has better prices for. It? Yeah, I believe so. My last conversation with him about that was two weeks ago, so I believe so still. Okay. So we'll talk more about this later. Right. We wanted to give okay. you the preliminary list. Give us a chance to prioritize it on our end. That too. <laughs> okay. And that's what we have. That's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. Anybody? Any comments? Further discussion on the issues or items we've just talked about? My, I just going to say. I mean, this is. I think it is a several parking lot. Um, Comments you think is going to be improving, and I've just on that Create Buchanan website, I see that several people are concerned about the middle school parking lot, safety-wise entrances, maybe painting where you come in and where you come out, things like that will help direct people. And that's actually on this list to look at the possibility of paving that gravel lot where they cut across there. Mm. Okay. And, and Keith has on this list also those painting of lines in all the parking lots and make sure that they're, yeah. they meet all the requirements. So that, that, I that's think warning is, is good in the eyes of the law, you know, and so if you direct people, right, decreases the opportunity for accidents. Yeah. 
The only other thing we might want to uh, talk with the board is, is that a group of hardy folks did take a tour of the property last week, and we'll be working on, <laughs> on that. Uh, some of them went deeper into the woods than others, but... <laughs> Some of them still have bruises. Still, still I want you all to take your hats off to George Pathfinder Carver. That's right. <laughs> that guy's a trooper. He may sit behind the desk and play with numbers all day. But, but he did it. He did the whole thing. Good job. Actually, we had a tour of the property with, with the uh, surveyor that surveyed it and um, looked at the entire piece of it. Quite a trip. It's quite a trip. So. And we'll be gathering. He's going to get us a uh, plot of the entire property, and then we'll pull that task force back together. Okay. Anything else? No. So we'll move on to financials. And for that, we'll turn to George Pathfinder Carver. Yeah. <laughs> That's a new nickname. It's, it's, it'll stick. Too. <laughs> it's better than some of the ones I've had before. <laughs> You're growing up. <laughs> Public hearing and approval of submission of levy rates to state tax department. Uh, attachment B. Okay. Uh, I apologize. I'm losing my voice for some reason. Uh, I'll try to speak loudly. Um, the law requires that the assessor provide to us on, on or about March 3rd of each year, the assessed values for the next fiscal year. Uh, and we then apply our uh, the levy rates for the regular and the excess levy to those assessed values and determine how much money is gonna be raised by those levies. And the, uh, those schedules are in your, in your agenda packets. Uh, we will uh, suspend this meeting uh, until April 17th, at which time, uh, well, after tonight, we're going to mail these uh, schedules to the state auditor's office and to the West Virginia Department of Education. And the state auditor mm -hmm. has to approve the schedules that they are calculated correctly, that the rates are the, the, the legal rates that have been filed and that everything is in order. And we'll get a letter back from them approving our levy rates. And then uh, we also need to publish these schedules in the newspaper uh, so that the public has a chance to see them. And then we'll come back on that April 17th date and you'll vote on whether you want to approve these rates for, and that, that'll be the uh, basis for part of our revenue for our budget for, for 2013. Um, just a uh, brief comment about the uh, levy rates themselves. Um, the assessed values for Upshur County increased significantly over last year. If you'll recall, last year they went down from the year before. Uh, our levy rates, that the change in them right now is kind of dependent on natural gas prices. And so, and it's based on a five-year average of those prices. So they went up last year, and of course they're down this year, so we might see a, a reversal of this increase partially next year. But I'm encouraged that uh, the classes of property that are, are unrelated to that have also increased, not to the same degree as the ones that are tied to the uh, natural gas prices. But it shows that there's growth in the county and that our assessed values are holding up and there's new construction and people are improving their properties and, and things like that. Um, the regular levy will show an increase of about $600,000 over last year's rate and the excess levy will be about 316000 <coughs> over last year. So that, the excess levy, that $300,000 is extra money that we can use for some of these capital improvement projects we've been talking about. So, um, also in the agenda is a, a copy of the budget calendar. Um, some of the things that are on there have already transpired. Um, we were talking about having a workshop for us to go through the, the budget in detail and for you to make some decisions about some discretionary things that, that are available to you. And I believe we're talking about April the 12th for that meeting. I'm not sure what time you're that evening or morning. Meeting. We we haven't talked about it yet, but okay. Um, budget workshop. 
the point. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I, my my intention is to to put together a draft of the budget in advance of that meeting, um, and publish a summary budget that will have the, the revenues will be set pretty much because we'll know what the state aid numbers are. In fact, I already have those. We'll have the, the levy rates and plus some other things that go into that. And I'll have the uh, salary budgets pretty well uh, determined. You've already, uh, in a sense, approved the staffing for next year when we went through the RIF transfer process. Uh, we can add to that, but we can't cut it anymore because at that time the frame has already passed. Uh, so that's about 80% of your budget. So that those numbers are pretty easy to, to build into the, <coughs> the budget. So we'll, we need to publish the summary budget in the newspaper and make that available for public inspection for at least 10 days before you have your budget hearing and approve that. And my uh, suggestion would be that there's a regular board meeting on April the 24th. I believe it's the second. 22nd. 24th, and that we would have the budget hearing on the 24th and approve the budget. Uh, we're, we're not really required to have it done and submitted to the State Department until June 1st, but um, once we get working on it, there's no sense in delaying that. We just go ahead, unless something comes up that we need to delay it. Are there any questions about any of the processes or the, the, the levy schedules themselves? And you'll, you'll have the sample budget for us ready on, on the 12th if we indeed yes. do decide to have a budget work up there. Well, you know I'm going to be going for a week, but if, uh, if we can't do it, then we still have plenty of time. Yes. Yeah, there's, not there's, to do it. We're not required to do it on the 24th. We right. could even go into May and approve the budget then. Right. Okay. I'm pretty far along with the, with the salary portion of it uh, to where I can pop that into the... It, it, there's a little work area in Weavis so you can do that and play with things. And then once that's done, you can it puts it in by account code that you can transfer into the budget. Mm -hmm. And then I just have to do the other 20%. Mm -hmm. So are you suggesting maybe the budget workshop in that first week in May? Is that, is that what you just... I'm just saying it would be possible. But yeah. I mean, we don't have to have done that quickly. Would that be better? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, fin and finish the draft as soon as I can get it done. Sure. Yeah. When the board acts on it, it is at the discretion of the board. I just, I, I uh, with only three members here tonight, I hesitate to make commitments for a budget workshop uh, of any, at any time, right. to be okay. honest with you, because I think it's important that they're all here for that. Um, and I also feel like um, it almost seems like we're getting in a hurry. We don't need to. I mean, if, uh, if you could have the the summary ready and you know, put it all together and we can see that, that's fine, but uh, we may want that a week or so before our actual budget workshop just so we can have that to to uh, get familiar with before we actually have the budget workshop and then do that. Still have plenty of time to uh, submit it to Charles. Okay, that's, that's it your... That's, that's just, yeah. that's my feeling. Mm -hmm. your feeling. Uh, yeah, this will be my second real cycle, the first time I was yeah. in the fog of introduction. So, I mean, I, I, I think... Never admit that. Uh, well, <laughs> I'm out of the fog now. <laughs> but, now you're uh, on the spot. But uh, the... Uh, no, I, I, I think as soon as to see the numbers to review, but, but if we have time to make the final decision, I think it's wise to ponder them till we understand. And if it's going to be published, then I think it's time to get feedback again from people who may see it in the paper, too. Well, uh, uh, to be honest with you, what's, pub what's required to be published in the paper is very highly summarized, and, and I, I don't know that... Won't well, give detail. Later. Won't, I mean, we have to make the detail available for public inspection, but in, this would be my ninth budget in, in schools, and I am not all on Upshur County, but I've never had anybody come in and ask for the budget. Right this, this will be the year that that happens. Yeah. <laughs> okay. well, there are people in Upshur County that have come in and ask to see the budget. So it may be your first time. It hasn't happened yet. <laughs> well, we encourage that. We have an right. open open book. So uh, let's, let's uh, put that off, that decision for when the budget What we'll do is, is we'll pull the board on, on, a, on a good date because the 17th you're not going to be here, right. so we don't want to make the decision that night. We'll, we'll try and have it. Okay. 
the, the date decided prior to that. Okay, very good. Okay, okay George. Anything else on the budget? No, sir. Everybody understand the budget procedure? Got your calendar there? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we'll, uh, perhaps we should make a motion to approve the levy rates. You'd like to do um, that? Actually, I don't think that you... Oh, that's right. We're not doing that. We're going down to 17th. Yeah. We yes. need to adjourn the meeting yes. until the 17th. Thank you. So uh, we'll move on then. Mm -hmm. okay. Adrian's correcting me. She says we need to approve submitting them to the state. Thank you, Adrian. I, I thought I was right. I think that's right. <laughs> so a motion to approve a uh, levy submission race. Make a motion we approve. Thank you, Mrs. Bellamy. Second. Thank you, Mr. Johns. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those same sign. Motion yes. carried. Okay, we'll move on now into the consent agenda. We have a number of items there, transportation requests for field trips uh, out of state, and we have chaperones, approval of bid award for bus operator physicals, and approval of bid award for mowing. So motion to approve consent agenda. So moved. Thank you, Dr. Roman. Any questions about any of the items in the consent agenda? I just have one. In, in Did you general, have something? Yeah, just in general. When when the bids go out for physicals and things like that, is all hospital groups bidding or? Um, who's, how did we need? We made a list. Of, well, um, we've been paying for bus driver physicals for a number of years and <clears throat> going to their own doctor. So we we made a list from our records of every. Facility that's provided facilities or provided physicals mm -hmm. last year, and we contacted each of those and told them we were going out for bids. We got three proposals back. Okay, so it's fair enough. I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. And I would ask you, uh, Keith, <coughs> why are we doing three different companies for lawn maintenance? How'd that work out to be? Um, when we got all the bids in, there four total that submitted, and those three. For the distinctive areas that we, we put within the bid, then those were the three that were awarded uh, based upon cost. But so you just you broke up the, the three areas that were they more convenient for these folks to work in, or um, well, how'd they get yeah, broken up? Basically, for one, yes, mm -hmm. the individual or the company is it's convenient for them. Um, you know, the other two out of it, um, you know. I've been one's been doing it for a while for the county, and the other is someone who's uh, starting up. And do we have uh, are the prices the same as we've been getting pretty much? Or? Yeah. Actually, I think some of them. Each, thank you. Went down a little bit. This is per per month. Some discretion about if we don't think it needs mowing, can we tell them? That? We can. We have every right to tell them. That. We could do more of them weekly if conditions require that. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know, in years past, we've had some dry periods when it obviously didn't need it, and I just wondered. And I was just going to say that towards the end of the summer and late August, mm -hmm. September, we've cut them back to yeah. once every two weeks. April, May, you could do it every other day. Yeah. So, motion made. Second? Second. Mrs. Bellamy, and all those in favor say aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Those same sign. Consent agenda approved. Moving on to item 10. We have policies and our continuing review of our policies, <coughs> changing our numbers. We have the second reading of the revised policy section 1.1, which will here and have to be policy 1001 educational mission and goals has some lovely comments mm -hmm. man <coughs> I just feel like you ought to read every one of those um, 
but it does sound like uh, some folks have actually read the uh, the mission and goals and we're pleased with them so we're glad that uh, number one that folks were reading those and that they're pleased with what we're putting down um, first reading then also revised policy section 1.2 here and after policy 1501 policy development attachment K and first reading of revised policy section 1.3 here and after policy 1002, board meetings. And I think I had a question about that one. Do you have that right in front of me? I did. The board meeting. Something about the, the uh, budget? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We always, we don't always meet on the you always going to meet on the third April to approve the budget? Well, I think that's what we're running into with this budget. This is what was originally in our in our current policy. Everything that is italicized, it's been added. That's been pulled from state policy. See, the budget okay. used to be due earlier than it is. So we need to look at so that. So maybe we so ought to change, change that. And, um, like I said, that's what's in current policy mm -hmm. as of right now. Yeah. I think... Perhaps we just need to go to this sentence, or the board shall meet at such other at such times as provided by statute for the budget. Yeah, I don't know why we even need to enumerate. Yeah. We don't. We don't. When we'll do the budget, yeah. because by law we have to do it, submit it by a certain time. Um, the less rules, the better. The more flexibility, the better. Absolutely, the flexibility. It's less rules means less more flexibility. comments from you all on any of those then we'll uh, let's see we will approve policy 1001 at the next meeting that will be the third reading yeah, yes, sir. and uh, continue to take comments on the the other two policy 1501 and policy 1002 so now we'll move on to Child Nutrition Program Identometric System. Cindy Russell Road. Mother, I believe, of one of our... Yes, mother yeah. of one of the Indeed. National Honor Societies. Can't wait to tell my wife. I think she had that one in class. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and your wife is one of his favorites. <laughs> um, I'm handing out something to you. As you know, we've been working on the breakfast and the lunches at the middle school and high school, and we've been trying to serve a lot more students than usual and um, first let me tell you what we do in order to get hundreds of children through at the middle school and high school everybody gets a laminated card with their student ID number on it which is their Revis number the last so many digits of that are called their lunch number and the children get this plastic laminated card that they keep with them if we're lucky that they keep with them and they, they scan it like a barcode scanner at a grocery store. If the children do not have their lunch card, then they do have to wait to the end of the line because those kids that have their lunch card can go right through, get scanned, and go. The middle school, if you've lost your lunch card, you need to go into the back of the line. You do have to pay to replace your lunch card because it's really difficult when you've got hundreds of kids going through. They've got all got a different number. Kids are pretty notorious about telling somebody else's number or little tricky things that you, you know, you can't believe. But the main purpose of doing that is not to make it difficult on the children. We have to, you know, tell the federal government how many children we have fed. And that number needs to be accurate and correct. So a lot of other counties in West Virginia, I think there's only maybe three or four counties that do not have some kind of biometrics scanning which is finger scanning to get their kids through the lunches. Well, I didn't really want to pay for that because I've spent a lot of money on food, so I was trying to, and so when I wrote these grants, part of what I could do was do something that would speed up the service. Because when you take 300 kids through in nine minutes at the high school for breakfast after first, you don't want the kids standing in line or they're not gonna wanna get in line to get their meal. At lunchtime at the high school, 
Uh, there are certain lunches that are extremely long, and Miss Billy, me, and I have talked about this. There's one lunch that's really bad. If I could speed it up some, so that's what I was looking at. How do you, you know, if you go to the mall and you go to the food court and you see the lines, you're going to pick the place that there's not a line, <clears throat> or you're going to wait till later. So we're doing the best we can. So what I did a metrics is is basically a finger scanning system. And it isn't really, I will take you through that. The first thing people will say, oh, it's your fingerprinting. Well, actually what it is, sort of, the child will put their finger on here and it, and it initially takes a photograph of that. It doesn't ever store the fingerprint itself. It takes a photograph and has a certain amount of little areas on there that it sets a, a, um, a numerical number to. So the next time it's there, will that match? But the child's fingerprint is actually destroyed after it's first in their register. Now, um, what this does, is it, it would take the place of those kids walking up with card, you hold it here and you go like this, and you're aiming a scanner at it, am I correct? And you're trying to get it to hit, or you're telling the kid and they're going, 472081, and you've got kids in line and you've got cashiers. Well, what this would do, what they would literally themselves, and I've got speakers for the things, they would hear a beep, like at the grocery store. Once it's scanned, beep, okay, you're good, so you go on. And um, I didn't know what I thought of it at first until you're really working with this and you're trying to make the service better for the kids. You want the kids to eat. So I was trying to relieve the hindrances. Uh, the best thing I can tell you is that I could keep talking, but in this little packet, there is a, a, a food service director from um, Wood County in West Virginia, and she writes a letter that explains why they use it. <coughs> and basically what she says is exactly what I could write, or any child nutrition director. You, I, when I read this, I thought, okay, this says it all. She basically says, I'm responsible for all the federal um, documenting of who's eating and who's not, and you need it to be right. Um, and she was using ID cards with the PIN numbers. And she said on certain days, more than 80% of the kids forgot their card. And when that starts happening, you talk about slowing the line down. And middle school's even worse than high school, I think. Because at that age, I've got a middle school board. Boy, they lose everything. Or they turn their lunch card into a makeshift knife. Or who knows, it turns into the washing machine and it's ended up lost. But anyway, they get destroyed. And we have, then you have to stop a secretary to go print another one and laminate it. And then call that kid to the office out of class time to redo that card to keep this process going. So like she said in this letter, um, we wanted something that students would not forget and that they would always have with them. Um, and that would be not too expensive and compatible with the software they already had, which is exactly what this company did. They've worked extensively in West Virginia. I know Mr. Dilley, as a principal, he chose to use it at a school, and I believe you told me, if I can say this, it was truly used to help get the accuracy up. Because he was having people not be scanned, you know, and he wanted to make sure his counts were correct, and he seemed to like it when you did it. Yeah, it, it can speed things up. Um, she says, um, students would never forget their fingers. We found several cafeteria applications that sold a kind of finger scan, but they all wanted thousands and thousands of dollars, and I didn't want to spend that. Then she says, um, it seamlessly integrates with any cafeteria application that uses swipe cards, which is what we already use. So this is just basically going to plug in, and we have that new POS system that we started last year in November. This just gets plugged into the computer in, in place of the scanner at the middle school and high school. Um, um, and how is it working? And she says that it was uh, in Wood County that it was accepted by the board, the superintendent and principals, teachers and parents of the community once they really all understood what it was. You know, that it truly was not a, um, it was just, it was for speed and ease and nobody was going to be holding anybody's fingerprints. Um, our food service staff, they ended up loving the program there and um, 
The students adapted quickly. I imagine there will be a curve. It'll take a while to get everybody's pictures of their fingers. But you know, that could eventually stay in the system with their Weavis number, just like we do their ID card numbers now. Some school systems with, you know, children's being kidnapped and everything under the sun, they actually use a finger scanning system to get on school buses in certain areas. So they make sure they know who's there. They see this as a safety thing. Um, if you look in your packet, the, the thing that at does the most frequently asked questions, <clears throat> can my fingerprint be given to anyone else? No, there are no finger Im images stored. Only encrypted numerical representations of the unique points on the fingerprint are stored. And if you look at this other sheet, it actually shows you the process. That it starts out as a fingerprint, and then that's destroyed, and it's turned into these little arrows of the picture. And then they turn that into a number. <clears throat> if, you have, if you have twins or someone who has that's numbers the, that are close, it will still recognize. It will still recognize. Okay. One of the most commonly asked questions is, do twins have the same fingerprints? Okay. And it says no, every ones are unique enough to be caught on this. But, but you might have 95% right. the same, and it'll still it'll differentiate. St it'll still differentiate. According to my little, okay. as to I'm, the best of my knowledge. I'm sure the twins will try this out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they will. Um, then it says, can my fingerprint data be taken off the computer and used to recreate my fingerprint? Now, this is a good question. This is a question my husband had. Well, can't you take those numbers and recreate a fingerprint? And the answer is no. Identometric never takes your fingerprint, only unique points. The actual fingerprint cannot be recreated from the income encrypted template. Can my fingerprints be taken from the computer software and used on another fingerprinting system? No. Uh, the algorithm that they use to do this only works with their program. Um, why biometrics in schools? Many areas in school require identification. The most common kinds of identification currently are used in ID cards, pens, and of course, visual identification. Each of these methods creates its own issues and is drained on the time and the resources of the IT department. And it really does. Anybody that's ever scanned lunch knows what I'm talking about. It just, it bogs things down and human error gets in there. <laughs> you know? Um, then it says, do finger scanners spread germs? And they, according to this, they're no more germy than like a doorknob. But it's really important to explain what it is because people get in their mind it's something different than what it is when they hear biometrics or fingerprinting. So I, Mr. Lampinen, really wanted me, um, before we're not, we're thinking about doing this next year, I have the equipment, like here's my finger scanner. Um, we got it for the middle school and high school and I got very lucky. They had given me a quote for the whole county because they were trying to get it in every single county in West Virginia. And I said, I don't, we don't have the money to do that. I wasn't really wanting to do that for elementary yet. So I wrote these grants and I called them back and I said, why would it be just for the middle school and high school? Well, they gave me the quote based on me doing all nine schools. So they let me have this because they told me that in good faith. I got it quite inexpensively compared to what other people have just because the guy never told me the difference. I said, I wrote you back and said, I only want to do two schools. And he said, we're going to honor that. So on my invoice it says, super big discount. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I was happy because <laughs> we were able to do that and still do other good things. <laughs> they don't like me, but I'm going to, yeah. I'll be all right with it. But anyway, that was the plan. I hope that it works good for the kids. You know, every now and then you'll hear some people giving some negative that, you know, the kids aren't sure how to put their fingers on there. I personally wanted to do the middle school and high school because there's our problem with our lines. What's, what's the penalty, if, the federal government's penalty, if you feed too many children? <laughs> there is no penalty if you, what the federal government asks is if we claim that a free child ate, that free child better have eaten if we claim that because they're going to reimburse us for that. So we have to claim everybody that eats, whether it's breakfast or lunch, and those meals have to include exactly what we need to have in them. 
So one of two ways you could get in trouble. Maybe I wouldn't be putting the right stuff in there, or kids go through without getting all the components. Or, um, you know, what really hurts us as a county is we need that reimbursement to make the budget work. And if people are just letting kids go through, whether they're free or paid, you are, it's like water draining out. And so it's really important to keep those accurate. But if we, any, they actually reimburse us for every uh, free child and every child that's paid a little bit. So um, they don't complain about us feeding them. They just want to make sure that the right ones we're feeding in, that it's, it's being counted correctly. So. And so they think if you're doing this, that you're counting it correctly. Well, no, they say that this, uh, the state, federal, uh, Charleston hasn't said a whole lot about this. I think they love it because it's become more accurate, but they won't promote any particular group. Uh, but this is a lot more accurate than you know, having every different school doing it a different way, especially as big as a high school, you're in middle school, three lunches at a pop within, you know, two hours of the day. How much, um, how much money will it make you then? I mean, if you, if you become, will you become 20% more accurate or what do you think? I don't know. I think that it says in there 10% more accurate. It's actually written in okay. the, uh, and I don't know that right off the top of my head, but if you but, look at the... Um, but you'll know next year at this time. Um, how accurate you've become. Pardon me? You'll know next year yes, at this time how would. accurate you have become. That one that says positive ID at your fingertips, mm -hmm. I thought that one had some of the, um, there was so much in there I was trying to give you. I'm sure. going to guess that you're going to pick up that 10% mm -hmm. that you were losing. I don't think it's going to make us jump to the sky, but I think it will be much more accurate. Mm -hmm. And we get calls from parents, which is also in the, the letter from the Wood County. You'll get a call from a parent, and this happens a lot, especially to, at big schools. My kid was absent that day, and you're showing that there's lunch. Mm. Okay? You get that phone call, and then you have to explain, so you have to look into it. What, you know, what we've usually figured out is somebody has human error, put a number in wrong, or some kids walked up and told Johnny's number because he wants two lunches that day. And those kind of, th this would eliminate that. Johnny given his, he's not going to eat today, so he just parked it. Uh -huh. else. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then you've got parents who pay for their child's lunches going, my kid's not even eating. So there's a small occasions of that, but this would eliminate that as well. Mm -hmm. So our billing would be more Probably accurate. accommodate substitutes and guests? Um, you could still be scanned. I'm going to keep... You're going to have both. I'm going to have an option available because some people may just feel uncomfortable with the whole process. And, and when they talk about when you implement it, it says please have an option out. So if they wanted to go into the office or you wanted to have one machine that you could just still scan the card, we would be able to do that. There would be no reason to not accommodate somebody that had to worry about it. Are we going to send anything home about yes. this before we implement Yes, I tried sure. to put that in there to be a mental note to me. If you look on the back of the privacy materials one that looks like this, the company gives you a sample letter that I will talk about with Renee and with um, Bob, Mr. Wilmoth, Ms. Warner and Mr. Wilmoth, because you really want to tell the teachers what you're doing first. Mm -hmm. Too. So I'm going to ask to meet with the teachers and the faculty, let them know why we're doing it. And that really needs to be done before this letter would go home. It's the last page. Mm -hmm. And we would send up home a letter with every student at the middle school and high school before we would do this. Is this a prelude to identifying every kid that goes through the door in the morning? I, it looks like some school systems use it to that effect. I mean, that would be pretty pretty good deal really today the way the sure parents are and everything and it would really free up the access uh, for the people that are late always having to be buzzed into the office now, obviously visitors thought to be buzzed but, and Cindy alluded to the fact that uh, buses are already in some counties in our state are already using this on some of their buses to make sure the appropriate children are on the bus and it doesn't allow for uh, kids that aren't supposed to be on that bus and some people do at the athletic events. I mean, there was one sheet that was in there. You all can look at it later. It says, um, 
field trips to make sure everyone is accounted for, you know, before you'd leave somewhere, um, to know who's in your school and where your students are at all times. I mean, there's obviously a place for this eventually that would be much bigger than lunch. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. I, I can see, you know, when they, even when that kid goes in the classroom, you know, he sticks his finger up every time he goes through the door and, and you know exactly where the kid is at all times. This letter is good, but I think it ought to go home before you start, but like maybe this year. Oh, well, we would, I, I, you mean, but we weren't going to implement this till next year. I know, but but I, if, to give people a chance to read it, digest it, get feedback, rather than wait till the beginning of next year, and then. I could see that. The only issue I would have is it, would, it comes a little bit complicated who you're sending it to, and then you're sending it out to the fifth graders. I can see waiting, and I'll try that. And, and, and you help me sit down with me and help me figure out how you want to do that. My only worry was that we're going to try to get some of the kids scanned. <clears throat> we don't want to wait to the beginning of next year and start getting every child's fingerprints, first day of school, first new day, and all that. My hope was we're going to scan people out at the end of the year, but at the end of the school year when there is some downtime at a few times, I wanted to get the kids, because it takes a um, three captures of the, the index finger on both. So you were going to send it home this year? Yes, I was, but, but I wasn't going to really start it until next year. I wanted right. them to know that they would be. But parents should know you're yeah. doing that oh, yeah, before yeah. you ever do it. Yes. So that letter should go yes. out this year. Yes, I misunderstood what you said. Exactly, we're doing that. Yeah. But I want to talk to the teachers first mm -hmm. because then they'll hear something and it won't be correct. You know, and so then if the children come in with questions, we can at least explain <clears throat> more about what it is and have everybody on the same page. But I'm starting with you all first. So when were you looking at sending this out and actually meeting with the teachers? And well, the next faculty meeting that they'd have at the middle school or the high school, I'm planning, I'm planning on going to go and explain it to them, show it to them. I've already met with, um, Glenn has been help. like, I can't even thank Glenn enough. Her whole team has been working with me because we've got new equipment coming in at the middle school with these fancy little umbrella carts that the kids are going to get breakfast on in the mornings. <coughs> And this new system kind of ties into this new breakfast thing we're doing, and they're trying to help me get that up and running while by those same people, the TISSs at the middle school and high school have been working with Glenna to figure out how we're actually gonna get everybody scanned. But luckily, Regina did this in Hampshire County. Hampshire County did this, and Regina has done it before. So you would have one scanner per lunchroom, or is there gonna be multiple? Oh, there'll be multiple yeah. ones. Just like we have normal lines, there will be a finger scanner at every place that you can still get in line. Where's the memory? I mean, is it a simple computer someplace? It would, I don't know. It's, it's, a, good, it's a database. I can turn it into a server somewhere. It, it's going to be on the, and they tie it with this Primero that we're using, and it takes it from the Weavis numbers. So it's just going to match that binary number to the kid's Weavis number. Sounds good. Good luck. <laughs> what movie was that where they um, stand under something that says, uh, beat me up? <laughs> beat me up, Scotty. Beat me up, Scotty. 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 <laughs> you, you know, it's Star Trek. <laughs> was he asking what was that show? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was accustomed the audience. <laughs> I'll watch the Big Bang Theory, <laughs> don't you? <Yes>. <laughs> okay, <laughs> moving on. Correspondence and information. Uh, the only information and correspondence we have is we've placed in front of you a uh, another calendar. It's the, it's our calendar that we've already approved. Uh, we've been getting some inquiries because other counties have different changes in their end of the year calendar. So we've been getting calls. So we thought we'd put this out again. Our schools have put it out in their newsletters, but we wanted you to have it, and we're going to ask the press to take a copy with them again tonight as a, as a newsletter so we can get it out yet another time. So everybody knows exactly where we are. And without a lot of explanation, it just says, here's the days we will be in session, and here's the days we won't. Uh, so we'll get that out. And maybe a little out. explanation as to why some of the other schools 
Right, other counties are. They had their snow days built into the very end of their correct calendar. Right, and, and so uh, with no snow, they were able to adjust their calendar. And that's correct. Be out earlier. Right. Yeah, <clears throat> and that's all. Okay, thank you. Okay, you've all had a chance to review the superintendent's personnel. <coughs> Do I hear a motion to approve the personnel? Make a motion we approve personnel. Thank you, Mrs. Bellamy. Second. Second. Thank you, Dr. Allman. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Hey, we have no delegations. I don't see any paper. No, we did not. Nobody's here. Board member comments. Anybody have anything they'd like to spell off about tonight? Well, I just I brought something that came to the doctors of the state of West Virginia, and, and since we're talking about school-based clinics and so forth, I thought this is appropriate to just mention that uh, the state of West Virginia is going to be requiring the TPAP, this the uh, tetanus, diphtheria, pertussis vaccine for entering seventh graders and the MCV4, which is meningococcal meningitis vaccines. And uh, anyway, they um, are going to utilize, they're asking all the doctors of the state to utilize the West Virginia State Immunization Information System uh, to enter the data if they give the shot in their office. So this is uh, one more step. We're talking about the computerized medical record, one more step for the information to be available to our nurses or school personnel. Um, and this is this is uh, going out to, to all the family doctors of the state and so forth. So I think we're in the right direction uh, as we computerize more and more things. Mm -hmm. And I guess my question would be, would this system talk with our Weavis system? Because that's mm -hmm. where we, we won't talk with them. our Weavis, but our doc. Well, yeah. Well, we'll have the the information. Have that the nurses have it on their on theirs already okay and as a matter of fact just to just to add a little bit to that we've already notified our middle school and our high schools have already notified uh, those students that will be impacting next year because there's no grace period on this no with the typical immunization uh, we have a grace period for students if they don't have this um, by the first day of school next year we're not to permit them into school Right. So prior to the start of we've been notifying parents, and as a matter of fact, we just got notification from the health department. We're working uh, in conjunction with them to set up a clinic. They had their side uh, out today. Did that good mm -hmm. to to get that taken care of. So hopefully, we'll everyone will. So, is there a way to handle those parents who do not wish to have their children immunized? The only uh, that I'm and Jody can help me on this, but my understanding is is the only way you can be out of that is opted out is through a doctor's uh, is that correct on this one also a doctor's uh, exemption I know we do have some folks that choose not to do that so I was wondering since this was something that uh, they had we, this we actually have been working very hard in the last couple of months to get all our immunization immunizations up to date with even our elementary children and David and Mrs. Akers and principals have been working with families and have met individually and there's a couple that are on the list to be excluded from school because they've been given so many opportunities. I, I tell you that to tell you that if they don't get what they're supposed to and the law will work with them as best we can but we have to adhere to the law. So if they don't have it, they'll be excluded. So then what happens? Do we have to teach them at home? We hope we don't have to cross that bridge, but that's a good question that we need to look at. I don't know the answer to how that how that will work. Do you? No, I assume it will Yeah, we'll, I'm, I'm sure we'll work through them through truancy um, issues because it'll go down as an unexcused absence until they get it. Mm -hmm. so. Now, are we working with the health department in any way to offer those maybe certain days or yeah. Yeah. there's uh they're scheduling one for the 23rd i believe monday the april 23rd or something yeah seventh guest surprise to see if it's seventh grade and kindergarten shots yeah. Yeah. okay very good thank you dr all okay uh anything anybody else thank you uh, moving on then, our next meeting date will be Tuesday, April 10th. 
here at 7 o'clock. And then later on the 17th of April, we'll reconvene this recessed meeting. So we're going to stay here until the 17th of April. <laughs> <laughs> you all can come back and throw us some food in the door. In the meantime, we're going to have an executive session for property with no decisions, which is some discussion we have to have. A motion to go into executive session. I'm going to go into executive session. Thank you, Mr. John. Second. Second. Thank you, Mr. Bellamy. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same time. Motion carries. Thank you all.